Now onto the Team Bike Exchange Jayco women's team. Uh, just reviewing their season in 2021. They had two World Tour wins, seven UCI wins, and were ranked 10th in the UCI ranking. Uh, so even though FDJ sort of had less wins or Canyon Shram had less wins, they were probably more consistent throughout the year. But their best rider by far and away was Grace Brown. She won Vuelta Burgos first stage and OxyClean Classic Brugge de Pana. Generally good throughout the classics. Amanda Spratt had a few, I think, health issues this year. Uh, and otherwise, Tineo Campbell won it to a feminine Ladesh stage as well as uh, Zigart, as Zigart, who won uh, Setmana Ciclista Valenciana at fourth stage. So she's a pretty handy rider at the Slovenian as well, who extended, but not like not a great year either, Benji, from the bike exchange team, particularly as we get to the transfers. Grace Brown has gone to FTJ. Like that's that was a big move, and that was announced ages ago. Yes, certainly. It's, in my eyes, by far their best rider in uh, 2021. And she was able to drive in, I think, two World Tour wins. She won in uh, Burgos a stage, that stage where she there was this upsloping climb in the last few kilometers oh, and yeah. she got away with two other riders and eventually ended up winning the, the kick sprint there. OxyClean, where she rode away uh, as well. And obviously that top three at RVV is insane. Uh, so... That's a very strong performance. I think that Grace Brown is one of the uh, riders we've been uh, very hyped about in the last couple of years, I would say, on this podcast. Well, last couple of years. We've been doing this for a year and a half, but <laughs> it feels like years. <laughs> um, I um, I think that they're losing their best rider, and that's always a, a bad thing, is it? I know, and perhaps it is different, I guess, to the men's in that they have Lucy Kennedy's retiring, Sarah Roy, their classics rider, who didn't really get the results this year. She's going to Canyon Tram. Um, she kind of had a similar season to Matthews. The riders they're coming, they have coming in, like Kristen Faulkner, the American, she was really good at the later end of the season. She's sort of a late comer to the sport, but she won Lady Stewart of Norway first stage from a breakaway and then was good in breaks as well. Sarah Tizit and the whole of that Lady Stewart of Norway, actually. She came third, I think, on GC there. So she is a really good addition. She came from Team Tuco Silicon Valley Bank or not Women's World Tour, so a step up for her. Keen to see her in the classics with them. We also have Ruby Roseman Gannon, who has done well in Australian domestic racing, like the Santos Festival of Cycling. Uh, she was like consistent top five results there at the start of this year. She's 23, uh, I think just turned 23. And I don't know too much about uh, Nina Kessler. Do you know much about Nina Kessler, Benny, Dutch rider? I vaguely recall her getting second in our dash stage behind uh, bike exchange rider Tenille Campbell. Uh, so perhaps they uh, spotted her in her wheel and were like, ah, oh, next year we can get first and second in this race. Alexandra Manley is a track rider who, so maybe she's uh, replacing Sarah Roy because they don't really have uh, like a out and out sprinter that I can see. Uh, either so maybe she's that replacement Alexandra Manley 26 years old what do you see as the focuses for this team Benji is it are they just hoping Spratt and San Esteban can get some GC results I think it's a combination of getting results in GC yes but also I think there's good enough riders in here to win stages in races like I think a Faulkner can win stages in the same way that she did in the first stage of, I think, Norway. I think she's good enough in time trials to stay relatively close. I think her climbing is where she lost the majority of her time in Norway, for example. I think Spratt is pretty punchy and is still a good Ardennes Classics rider. I think she topped in every single one of the three this year, despite um, towards the end of the season not being, uh, well, the best self. Um, but I think that if you can top 10 all three of the Ardennes classics, you can win races, in my opinion. And those are the focuses for me. And the other ride is also just try and win stages. I I don't see a focus that I would say, oh, this rider is clear leader in that kind of race. And they have the ability of winning that race directly with that kind of rider. I don't see that in this team. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Georgia Williams, they've got Kiwi, both road and ITT champ. 
she's the sort of writer who seems to be like not capable of leadership per se, but in any of those parkour, but yeah, could perhaps go on a break as breaks in stage races get more common in women's world tour, like we saw at say a Burgos or a, a Ceratizid or ladies tour of Norway. But yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag, and I think a lot is relying on, say, Santa Esteban at Classica San Sebastian or Amanda Spratt to really come back to the level she was in uh, not that long ago. Like Amanda Spratt in 2019, third in World Championships road race, winning stages in World Tour races, the uh, Emma Kumin Bira, she had third Girodonna. Like she was top, top level in 2019, Amanda Spratt, and she's, she's 35 now, I believe. Uh, 34, 35, so it's whether she can come back to that level in, in 2022. I think that a lot is hinging on Amanda Spratt and whether whether Women's World Tour has moved on from there, whether it's it's gone up a level and, and she's sort of stayed the same, I don't know. Uh, but that's, I think, the state of play for them. I think Zigart's pretty good, actually. Um, so it's like seventh at Tour de Feminine, and won that race early on in the season. She just seems to be a, another break candidate. But yeah, I don't know about their their over under and wins. Uh, there's like as we said, there's extra races being added to the schedule um, for next year. I think. Well, they have two this year. I'm going to set the over under at two and a half, Benji, and I'm going to take the under. I'm going to take the over. Okay, is that the first one I might have diverged on. I don't know why yet, but. Based on, they might have luck and win some races. True, yeah. Mate, yeah, exactly. If Sprat comes back, she can win to herself and then they just need one more. So, yeah, that's, I think they're just missing Sarah Roy, although she didn't, she didn't win any races for them this year either. Wouldn't Gigante have been a, a good signing for this team? Because she went to Movistar instead, but. Yeah, I think she's, she went to Movistar. Did she go to Movistar? Yes. So she was on uh, Team Tibco, but I think she's been um, injured. Injured, yeah. I think she had no. She she had Mayo Mayo Puri. I'm reading this over Instagram just to make sure I'm right. She had Mayo Puri carditis back at the end of July when she felt unwell after racing in Tokyo, and so that takes a bit of time to recover from. So, I mean, moot point. She's not on bike exchange, but yes, I agree. Sarah Gigante, massively talented. And seven days ago, she um, she she put up a photo of her back on on the bike, which is good to see. But yeah, there is some Australian talent still out there. Like, watch out for Roseman Gannon, watch out for Giganti, and Alexandra Manley as well. But that was our bike exchange preview, and we hope you enjoyed it. Bike exchange. I think both teams hoping for better seasons next year, uh, and we'll wait to see if if they are. But make sure you like the the podcast you're watching on youtube players give us a review on podcast players and subscribe on your relevant platform of choice thanks to benji as always for his dedication on the sunday uh and his likelihood of winning the lfr poll and we'll see you with the next one ciao